and going again. Okay, so as we begin our part three study here, let's just have one more quick word of prayer. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, our most holy creator God, we thank you so much for this Sabbath day. Help us to find rest with thee, O oh Lord. We've come together again to study your beautiful word and to learn of thee, O oh Lord, and especially to try to understand the biblical foundation for this principle of typology, type and anti-type, and recognizing patterns and how they repeat. And we cannot do this of our own selves, Lord. We need your Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us. So we first acknowledge that we are weak and erring and broken sinners and that we desperately need a savior. Come close and wash us clean in the blood of the lamb that nothing might separate between thee and us. We ask for the ministration of your holy angels in our midst to push back the forces of darkness, O Lord, to teach and to guide us. We ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, O Lord, without measure, even with latter rain power, we pray teach us all things and to guide us into all truth. Open our eyes that we might see, O oh Lord, and grant us ears to hear. Please be with the questions and the comments and the conversation at the end that all the points that you would have to make plain might be brought out. And glorify thy own name is our prayer. May it be in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay. So uh, we have part three here of our series on biblical principles of typological prophetic interpretation. And we're continuing to look at scripture proofs and patterns. Now, we began by looking at the biblical words for type and anti-type, tupos and anti-tupos. And we saw that they had the meaning of type or pattern or figure or impression. And anti-type means also figure or counterpart. Maybe we saw there were related words that had tupos as a root within them. We had hupotoposis, which is pattern or form, and, and tipoo, which is to engrave or in stamp or in print. And uh, as we're doing this quick review here, you know, we can note that we have these keywords, two posts and anti two posts, but try not to be overwhelmed by trying to remember all of the Greek words here. Um, but that's not the point. I put them here so that we know that there are these different words, but let's focus on the English meaning of these words. So the hupotoposis means to pattern or a form. And, and tipo o is engrave and stamp or in print. And we had hupodegma, which was pattern or prefigure or to shadow. We had degma, which is example, pattern, or thing shown. We had skia, which was shadow, prefigure, or foreshadow. We had kataskiazo, which is to shadow or overshadow. We had sus. Schematizo, which is to conform to a pattern. We had metaschematizo, which means to transfigure or transform. We had schema, which is the fashion or figure or the manner of life. We had symorphos, which was to be fashioned like or conform. We had uh, synathea, and that was custom or intimacy or intercourse. We had eidos, the fashion, form, figure, or shape. And de lo o, which was signify or make known by relating. And we have many, many additional words. Um, going forward, you can just see some of them. I've actually found now over 50 words just in the Greek that have related meanings. And this evening, we're going to just focus in on two, the words hosper and kathos that we have here. Hosper means just as or even as or exactly like. 
and cathos is just as or even as or in proportion as. But we're going to see that these words are directly related to tupos, to type and anti-type, and that these words are used many, many times in the scriptures, and that we shall see, begin to really start to see this evening, I pray, how this principle just explodes throughout all the scriptures and how broad this principle really is. And we'll have many, many additional words in future studies, but let's focus in here on Hosper and Kathos for this evening and see how they're used in the scriptures. So again, this is part three, and the word Hosper, Strong's G5618, again, just as, even as, exactly like. It stands in close relation to what precedes, to be of one sort or class, to be like one. All of these meanings are connected to this word Hosper. And two examples that I have here in the PowerPoint, first from Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40, it says, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And the word as there in the beginning for as Jonah is the word Hosper, and it's creating this as one thing is, so is another. Patterns that repeat. So the pattern was Jonah, who was three days and three nights in the whale of the belly, and that's the type, as it were, and the anti-type is the Son of Man, Christ, who would be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And so we see here that there's a pattern that repeats, but as we've seen in our previous studies, that the pattern isn't necessarily exactly the exact same pattern, but it's similar. It looks the same, and it follows the same pattern. And how we know the application of what parts repeat and what parts don't repeat, that's through the discernment of the Holy Spirit and the inspiration that we have in the scriptures to help us to understand that. And so Jesus wasn't in the whale's belly, but he was in the sense that Jonah had a type of a death and resurrection experience in the whale's belly. Jesus would have an actual death and resurrection that was foreshadowed by the experience of Jonah. And the word here that gives us this principle of comparison is this word hosper, translated as as, in this case. And in a similar way, in Matthew 24, 37 to 39, it says, but as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noe entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And again, the word as there, but as the days of Noah were, and for as in the days that were before the flood. The word as is this word hosper. And we have a clear pattern here, one that happened in the past and one that's actually still yet to happen in the future, a repetition of the pattern, giving us this idea that we've learned about of pattern recognition and repetition through type and anti-type. And so the Son of Man's second coming has to follow the pattern of as it was in the days of Noah. And all that happened there, 
their attitude in life, and also we've seen also in the flood itself. We actually saw, when we saw the word antitupos earlier in our earlier study, uh, let's see if I can find that, antitupos, Strong's G499, we saw one of the examples where that word antitupos was used was here when it was made a comparison that the flood of Noah was a type of baptism. And that baptism is actually the antitype of the flood. And the idea of a death and resurrection and being born again and being cleansed from the filth of the flesh and turning back to God and also resurrection, as it were, in Jesus Christ are all connected to this idea of antitupos and Noah and what happened in the days of Noah. And we've just seen now how this word hosper is used to also talk about, as it were, in the days of Noe, or Noah. And so we are on solid biblical ground in saying this word hosper as well is a like word, a similar word, very interesting, that has a similar meaning to type and antitype or pattern recognition where patterns repeat. And so I want to look at this word more in the scriptures. Those were just two specific examples. And then we also have. Here, let's switch my share to the Blue Letter Bible. Yes, we have in Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, it also tells us, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. The like as Christ was raised up from the dead is this word hosper, like as. And so again, connected with the idea of baptism is a pattern for us. So the flood was a pattern for baptism. And then the death and resurrection of Christ and his baptism is a pattern for us that we should be raised to a new life in Christ and walk as he walked, follow his pattern of life. So here's another clear connection back to baptism, which is connected to the word antitupos. Now, this word hosper, we're in the Strong's concordance here on the Blue Letter Bible for the word hosper. It's an adverb, and we've seen the meaning just as and even as and exactly like, and it's actually used 42 times in the scriptures. Very interesting. The very first time it's used is in Matthew 5, 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So our Father which is in heaven is a pattern that we are to be like we are to follow the pattern and be like him perfect and the connecting comparative word is this word hosper even as also in matthew 6 2 therefore when thou doest thine alms do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So here we have a negative example. We've seen in, in, in almost all of these that there can be a positive and a negative side to these principles. We have the positive example in Matthew 5, that we are to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. And here we have a negative example that we're not to be like the hypocrites who seek the glory of men and that we are to be humble like our perfect pattern so we're not to follow the negative pattern 
of the hypocrites. And these are talking about believers, hypocritical believers or professed believers. Likewise, in Matthew 6, verse 5, we have, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So the hypocrites, those who act hypocritically, by the way, the word hypocrite means to be an actor, to pretend to be something that they're not. They're establishing a pattern. It's a negative pattern. And it's recorded for us that we not follow, that we, we seek through the grace of God not to follow the negative pattern. And repeat it. And, of course, we're warned not to do that because, of course, some and, yea, many actually do follow that wrong pattern. Also, verse 7, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So here's another negative pattern, the heathen. So the world links, we, first we had hypocrites in the church, and now we have worldlings out in the world, the heathen, and don't pray the way they pray to their false gods using vain repetitions. Don't follow that wrong pattern. Also in verse 16, moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Same idea. We've already looked at Matthew 12, 40 with the example of Jonah. Matthew 13, 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. So here, Matthew 13 is when Jesus is telling the parable of the sower and several other parables, the parable of the tares here in this example. And again, we have a negative example that we are to strive to avoid. That just as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall the wicked be gathered in bundles to be burned. Final judgment. And we are to seek to avoid that pattern. And this, is, this word hosper is giving us this comparative idea between the two patterns. Matthew 18, 17, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. So this is speaking about how you first go to your brother privately, if you have ought against him, and then with two or three witnesses, and then bring it to the church if he still doesn't listen. And if he doesn't listen to the church, then let him be as a heathen according to the pattern of how you treat a heathen is how you would treat a brother who doesn't submit to the word of god and to orderly and proper church discipline that's in harmony with the scriptures matthew 20 28 even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So here we see two patterns. There's one that the pattern of those who want to be ministered unto, and Christ says he's not following that pattern. He's establishing a new pattern. It's to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Pattern recognition connected with this word, hosper. And we want to be following his pattern of ministering to others and making a sacrifice of our lives for others. Self-sacrifice. As our dear brother Chris prayed beautifully at the beginning of our study. Matthew 24, 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Again, the word as here is the word hosper. We have this pattern of the way that the lightning lights up the whole sky and every eye can see it. 
so shall it be when the Son of Man comes. It will not be no secret event that only some are aware of, but it will light up the whole sky that all might see. We've already seen the example of verses 37 and 38, as in the days of Noah. Also in Matthew 25, 14, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So here he's making a, telling a parable about what the kingdom of heaven is like and the comparative word that establishes the pattern that we are to recognize and understand is the a man traveling into a far country who called his servants and delivered unto him his their goods and we're going to have to explore this idea much farther because we actually the word parable itself which isn't used in this particular passage even though he's telling a parable is itself a word that's connected to the idea of type and anti-type and patterns that repeat and all of the parables of the scriptures are actually patterns that we can discern how they're going to repeat according to what the parable teaches us and this word hosper is also used in this instance to describe the parable as a pattern that repeats because it will be even as or just as or exactly like how it what is described here in the parable when we try to understand what the kingdom of heaven is like also in verse 32 here in matthew 25 and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats so the pattern is how a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and as that is will be how it is when the king comes the second time and he separates and gathers all nations unto him. And they'll be divided into two groups. Those who are right with God and saved and those who refuse to choose salvation and are lost. Patterns that repeat. Luke 17, 24, for as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. So here's the parallel passage from Luke as it was in Matthew that we just read in Matthew 24. And we have this the same word hosper being used as the comparative word to show us it's a pattern that will repeat. Luke 18, 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. So here we have sort of a double negative pattern. The Pharisee doesn't want to be like the pattern of those who are extortioners or unjust and adulterers, which we shouldn't want to be like those. Those are patterns that we should avoid. But we also need to avoid being like the Pharisee who thinks he's better than everybody else. And he's actually in a far worse condition than the publican who he thinks he's not supposed to follow the pattern of the publican. And again, the word hosper is being used here to establish this idea that these are patterns that we need to avoid repeating. John 5, 21, for as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth them whom he will. So how the father brings, raises the dead to life and gives them life even so the son quickeneth him who does the same thing. The son follows the pattern of the father. And this word hosper is being used here. Also, the, we're going to have to look in a future study on even so here is a different word and ha, is, has a, a related idea that is giving us this comparative 
uh, uh, principle of patterns that repeat. So we actually have multiple words here, and we'll actually see in, in many of the verses that we're looking tonight, there's actually multiple words that are operating to give us this idea of patterns that repeat. But we're focusing in right now on this word hosper. Also in verse 26 of the same chapter, for as the father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the son to have life in himself. One is like the other. The son follows the pattern of the father. Acts 2, verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So we don't know for sure whether it was an actual wind that was blowing or if it was just as a rushing mighty wind. It sounded like a rushing mighty wind from heaven. And that the pattern would be the sound that a mighty wind makes is similar to the sound that was heard on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out. Of course, the scriptures tell us that he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. And they have cloven tongues of fire above their heads as the angels were cooperating with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, following patterns that repeat. Acts 3.17, And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. So here's speaking, uh, I believe this is Peter preaching uh, soon after the day of Pentecost, and he's telling them how they put Christ to death, the, 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 the Holy One of Israel, the Messiah. But then he tells, tells them that he perceives that they did it through ignorance, as their rulers also did it through ignorance. They were following the pattern of their rulers. We see here a, a great warning for us here that rulers in God's true church can actually be st establishing counterfeit patterns that lead you astray and that we ought to not be following because it can lead us to reject our Messiah. Acts 11 15, and as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. So this is the story of Peter with Cornelius the centurion, and how when he went to speak with them, and he preached to them unto Christ, and him crucified, that the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles as it had fallen on the Jewish believers at the beginning on the day of Pentecost, because they spake in tongues, and glorified God. That was a pattern that repeated. And we get that principle through this word, hosper, as on us at the beginning. Romans chapter 5. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. That by one man, sin entered the world, and death by sin is a pattern. In the same way that Adam transgressed and brought sin into the world, that each one of Adam's children and offspring follow the same pattern, that death has now passed on all men because we all transgress after the pattern of our first father. Similar principle in verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Again, patterns that repeat both negative and positive. The negative pattern of Adam's transgression and disobedience that we have all followed, but how Christ has given us a perfect pattern of obedience that we all ought to choose 
that we be made righteous like him, righteous by his faith. And hosper is the word here, as, that gives us this principle of the pattern that repeats. Again, also in verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Negative principles, sin reigning, having dominion that leads to death, and that grace might reign or have dominion instead. The good, the positive pattern through the righteousness of Christ unto eternal life. Patterns that repeat. We already looked at Romans 6 4, but then Romans 6 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. Patterns that repeat a negative pattern that we've yielded our members, servants to uncleanness and iniquity and a positive pattern to replace it, yielding our members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. Again, we'll look in a future study on when it says here again, even so is another related word here that gives us this principle of patterns that repeat. You can begin to see how I keep finding new words that have similar meanings. As we're just going through here, we find, we're finding additional words expressing the same meanings within the same verse talking about the principle of the patterns that repeat and how in every instance we've been able to tie it back directly to the words tupos and antitupos, type and antitype. Romans 11.30, for as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Pattern that repeat. The times past, not believing, negative pattern, and positive pattern, now obtain mercy that we can choose to follow or not follow according to our choice. But the choice that we make will he'll have consequences that follow the pattern. 1 Corinthians 8, 5, For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. There are many false patterns of worship and many false gods involved in those false patterns of worship. 1 Corinthians eleven twelve. 12, for as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. All things are of God. The patterns repeat. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Very similar to we saw in Romans chapter 5. Negative pattern, in Adam all die. We all follow the pattern of our first father. Even so, again, this is another word we're going to have to look at. In Christ shall all be made alive. That's your positive pattern that you can choose to follow. It's our choice. And the consequences of our choice follow established patterns. 1 Corinthians 16, 1, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. So Paul had given instructions to the church in Galatia, and now he's instructing the Corinthians to follow that same pattern when it came concerning the collection of, of offerings. And again, that we'll have to look at in a future study. 2 Corinthians 1 7, for our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye also be of the consolation. A pattern that repeats. When we choose to follow Christ, 
We are choosing to be partakers of his sufferings. As he suffered, we must also suffer according to the pattern and that willing sacrifice to give up self. But doing so, we will also follow the pattern of the consolation of the quickening of the spirit to new life. 2 Corinthians 8, 7, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. So here we have patterns that repeat. They had good patterns here of faith and knowledge and diligence and love. And he's speaking about them here, about generosity in giving to support God's cause. And he bids them to also follow that pattern of grace. 2 Corinthians 9, 5, Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you, brethren, uh, uh, unto you, and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. A negative pattern not to repeat. Galatians 4.29, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Patterns that repeat. Speaking here about how Ishmael persecuted Isaac, and that is a pattern that is going to repeat now. Again, we have this even so word that we're going to have to look at in a future study. Ephesians 5.24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. The positive pattern, how the church is to be subject unto Christ, is a, follows a pattern uh, related to how the wives are to be subject to their husbands. Similar patterns that must follow each other. First Thessalonians 5, 3, for when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Speaking about the final deception and how it will bring destruction on the wicked, it will follow a pattern of how travail or labor pains come upon a woman, which come upon a woman suddenly, out of the blue. Though it's true that the woman, by her pregnancy, knows that when she gets to a point where the labor pains ought to be coming pretty soon. That is also part of the pattern. But ultimately, the exact time about when those labor pains actually come is unknown, and they come upon the woman very suddenly. And they're going to come no matter what. They, she cannot escape them, just as the wicked shall not escape the sudden destruction that comes upon them when they cry peace and safety. Or as they've twisted lightly today, peace and security. Security is that great word they use today. Hebrews 4.10, for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. God worked six days and rested on the seventh day, ceased from his works, establishing a pattern that we, if we're going to enter into his rest, we need to follow the same pattern. We need to do our works in six days, but rest on his holy Sabbath day, the seventh day. And Hosper is the word that gives us this idea, comparative idea, that the pattern repeats. Hebrews 7.27, who needeth not daily as those high priests, 
to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Now here is a comparison between the uh, a, a sort of contrasting comparison between the high priestly ministry of Christ and the high priestly ministry of the uh, priests, the sons of Aaron in the earthly tabernacle. They had to offer sacrifices daily, the morning and evening sacrifice every single day. But here we see that Christ only offered himself once. But he's still a sacrifice. It's a similar pattern, but there's also there, there's a comparative aspect and there's a contrasting aspect. Hebrews 9.25, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. So speaking about how the high priest went into the most holy place every year, Christ would only have to go in once. Again, a comparison and a contrast. Christ is a high priest as the Old Testament priests are a high priest, but he's a priest after the order of Melchizedek, and he only goes into the most holy place once, while the high priest went in once a year. There is the comparison in contrast. And hosper is the word that gives us this idea. James 2, 26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Very interesting comparison here that we have. And a negative comparison which also lies the positive comparison, that we need a faith that works by love. Not a faith, faith without works, because that's dead. And Revelation 10.3, And cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. So the loud voice cried, as a lion roareth. Uh, I'm sure it didn't sound exactly like a lion's roar, but the way a lion's roar is very loud and can be heard by all, this loud voice is the same of Christ announcing his kingship to the world. Okay. Now. Switching back to our PowerPoint, that is the word hosper. And then the other word we're going to look at this evening is the word kathos. It's Strong's G2531, and it also means just as or even as, same as hosper, and then also in proportion as is another valid meaning for this word. Also, according to or according as, in the degree that, uh, and seeing that agreeably to the fact that, after that, are all potential interpretations uh, or meanings for the word kathos, but it has a very similar idea. And now, the first two examples that we looked at for Hosper were related to Jonah and to Noah. And we see here with the word kathos, we also have two examples that include both Jonah and Noah, demonstrating the similarity in meaning of these words. And again, Noah in particular, and all that happened with Noah, we saw is directly connected to the word antitupos. So in Luke 11, verse 30, for as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Jonah is the pattern, and Christ is the repetition of the pattern in a greater and fuller sense, type and antitype. Also Luke 17, 26 and 27, 
And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Patterns that repeat. The judgment in the days of Noah will follow the pattern, or is a pattern that the judgment at the end of time, at the second coming of Christ, will follow. And the, the attitudes, the mindset, the philosophy, the thinking, the lifestyle of all the people, and the principles of how the judgment is brought, all of it is a pattern that will repeat. And Hosper is the word that gives us this comparative principle. Now, let's switch back to our Blue Letter Bible. And as we consider this word, kathos, it's an adverb. We've looked at the meanings, and it's used quite a lot of times in the scriptures, 182 times in 180 verses. Not going to look at all of them, but a lot of them, because I want the whole purpose of these studies is to show how broad this principle is in the scriptures. So we want to see how it's being used. But let's, the first example I want to look at is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. That was the first place where we found the word tupos, and we looked at it closely. And that was where, in verse 6 here, it says, Now these things were our examples, that's the word tupos, to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. The word as here is the word kathos. Verse 7, neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. When it says as were some of them idolaters, it's the word kathos, giving us this comparison of the pattern that we don't want to repeat. Verse 8, neither let, the, let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Again, the word as here is the word kathos. Verse 9, neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Again, the word as is kathos there. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. So here in a key passage, it's one of the key passages where we have the principle of type, tupos, to give us the idea of a pattern that repeats. We also have this key comparative word kathos used in every example that is being shared here, showing clearly that this word kathos also is directly related and a, a, a similar word to the idea of type and anti-type and patterns that repeat. Now, we also have in Philippians 3.17, it says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. The word ensample here is the word tupos, and the word as here is this word kathos. So, we are to be followers of those who follow Christ and walk right. That's a pattern for us to repeat. And not only do we have the word tupos to tell us the pattern that repeat, but we also have this word kathos, which is giving us a similar principle. And... We also have Hebrews 8, 5. It says, Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern, shew thee in the mount. The word here, as, saying, as Moses was admonished of God, is the word kathos. 
But here we have multiple words here uh, are giving a similar idea. The word pattern is the word tupos, where we get type and type and antitype. The word example was the word hupodegma, and the word shadow was the word skia that we've already looked at. So this is one of the uh, another key verse here, and added to those words, we now have this additional word as kathos, giving us a similar idea of this comparative idea of patterns that repeat. So we can see for certain that we are on solid biblical ground again. That kathos is giving us a similar meaning to the idea of type and anti-type, of patterns that repeat. So coming back to the beginning of the instances where this word kathos is found in the scriptures, we start at Matthew 21, 6. It says, the disciples went and, and did as Jesus commanded them. So the patterns that repeat, we're going to see, they can be things that were, that things that happened in events that happened in the past. They can also be the lifestyles of people that lived in the past, and also things that were said or in the past can also be a pattern. So what Jesus spoke to them was a pattern. He commanded them, and they followed the pattern. I believe in this example here, this is when he was telling them uh, to, um, to uh, uh, go get the, uh, the colt for him to ride on on the triumphal entry. And how he gave them all the instructions and how they would find the colt tied. And if they took the colt and they asked them a question, say that the Lord needed it. And they followed all of the directions, the, the instructions that he gave them. They, it was a pattern that they followed. And this word kathos gives us this idea that it was a pattern to be followed and repeated as he commanded them, according to the word of God. Matthew 26, 24, the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. So Christ is saying he's going to go to the cross as it had been written of him. What was written before about him was a type or a pattern that he had to fulfill that pattern as the antitype, the fulfilling the prophetic word is this repetition of the pattern, seeing and following the pattern. Christ read about how he was to give his life a sacrifice in the word, and he followed those instructions or pattern and lived it out. Just as we are to do the same for all that the Lord instructs us. Matthew 28, 6, he is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Showing how he had risen as he had said before. It was spoken before, and then it happened the way he spoke it. The pattern repeated. According to what was said, so it was done. That's also the idea of a pattern repeating or fulfilling in this case mark 4 33 and with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it again connecting this idea of patterns repeat to the idea of parables which we're going to have to look at more deeply in a future study mark 9 13 but i say unto you that elias is indeed come and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. Again, as it is written. According to how it was written, so it came to pass to be so, because it followed the pattern precisely in the prophetic fulfillment. Mark eleven six, and they said unto him, as, and they said unto him, even as Jesus had commanded and they let them go. 
speaking again of the example of when they went to get the colt on whom never one had sat for Christ to ride on his triumphal entry. It was even as Kathos. It happened according as Jesus had commanded. It happened exactly the way he said, according to the pattern. In prophetic fulfillment. Mark 14, 16, and his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Here also the example of how to get the upper room ready. They were to follow a man carrying a picture who they would see when they went into the city and follow him where he went. And there would be an upper room that they could get ready for the Passover. And it happened exactly as he had said it to them. His word was fulfilled. His prophetic word was fulfilled exactly as he said. Mark 14, 21, the Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. So a parallel passage that we saw from Matthew here in Mark. Again, as it is written of him, the prophetic word is fulfilled and repeats exactly according to the pattern. Mark 15, 8, and the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. This is speaking about when Pilate offered to let one man go that the crowd asked to be set free. And they asked him to do it as it had ever been done. The pattern that had happened historically, he, they were at, crying out, for him to follow that pattern and let one go. And sadly, they asked for Barabbas rather than Jesus. But the pattern was repeated. Mark 16, 7, But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. That what was said prophetically in the past shall be fulfilled exactly according to what was said, according to the pattern of the words. And again, all these instances of this word, kathos, as. Luke 1, 2, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Speaking about the good news of the gospel and how Luke shared it with us as it was shared with him following the pattern. Verse 55 of the same chapter, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Again, speaking about the prophecies of what the Messiah would do, as the prophetic word said, it would come to pass just as it was spoken according to the pattern of God's word. And also verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Over and over and over again, we're going to see how the scriptures themselves show us that what is said prophetically in the past is a pattern that will always fulfill exactly according to as God's word has spoken. And God's word itself is a pattern that we can see and that's how we can see it is fulfilled, is by following the pattern of his words. Luke 2.20, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. So what was said prophetically to them by the angels about Christ? They went and saw, and it happened just the way they were told. It followed exactly the pattern of the prophetic word. The fulfillment follows the pattern. Luke 2, 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord. Again, what was written in the law of the Lord, the prophetic word in the law of the Lord, the command in the law of the Lord is followed exactly according to what is said in the historical pattern. Luke 5, 14. 
And he charged uh, him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Speaking about the healing of the leper and that he would, was to follow the instructions in Moses, the command the word of God recorded in Moses to be a testimony to them as it fulfills exactly the way God said it would. Luke 6, 31, And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Again, the word as here in each one of these instances is the word kathos. And how you would want to be treated, that's a pattern that you yourself should follow in how you treat others. Interesting, this word likewise is yet another word that we're going to have to look at in a future study, which gives a similar idea of these patterns repeating. Verse 36 in the same chapter, be therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. So God is the pattern in his great mercy, and we are to be the same way, to see and follow the pattern exactly as it's modeled for us. Luke 11, 1, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So how John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray is a pattern that the disciples here of Christ are asking Christ to follow that pattern and teach them how to pray because they heard how beautifully he was praying and how sincerely and they saw that he had a connection with God that they didn't have and that they wanted. And they use this comparative example of a pattern that repeats in a positive sense. In this instance, uh, verse 30, the same chapter, for as Jonah was assigned unto the Ninevites, so also shall the Son of Man be in this generation. As we saw already, that Jonah is this pattern, prophetic pattern, that repeats with Christ, type and anti-type. And it's using this word kathos in this particular instance. Luke 17, 26, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. We also have already seen kathos being used in this case with Noah as a prophetic pattern for the second coming. Luke 19, 32, and they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. So again, Christ sent them. He gave them instructions. And exactly the way he said everything would happen, happened exactly the way he said it would. Following that prophetic pattern revealed in Christ's word to them. Luke twenty two thirteen, 13. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. So these are parallel passages that we've seen already in Matthew, speaking about uh, uh, the triumphal entry and the final Passover and Last Supper. Luke twenty two twenty nine, 29, And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. So the same way that the Father has appointed a kingdom to his Son, Christ, is a pattern on how Christ appoints that same kingdom unto us and the comparison that shows us the pattern repeating is this word kathos luke 24 24 and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said but him they saw not so the women had given them a report of what had happened at Christ's grave and him, him not being there, having resurrected. And when they went to see, it was exactly the way they were told. It followed the prophetic word or the true account of what happened in the prophetic fulfillment according to the pattern. 
And also verse 39 of the same chapter, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is that myself handle me, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. Again, this comparative idea that Christ is not as a spirit. He's not following the pattern of a spirit. He's following the pattern of flesh and bones, of being physical, even after his resurrection. John 1, 23, he said, I am the, one, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Again, this idea of God's prophetic word fulfilling according to an exact repetition of the pattern of the word spoken by the prophet. John 3, 14, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Again, prophetic utterance in God's Word, giving us a pattern, and also the whole story of, the, of how the serpent was put on the pole, just like Christ became for, sin for us and hung on the cross, and it was looking and living that saved you from the bites of the serpents typifying sin that when we look to Christ on the cross, that's how we can live eternally, despite how sin has bitten us and will lead to our death unless we look and live. And the prophetic word fulfilled according to the pattern in his word, prophetically. John 5, 23, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which he hath sent him. So, the Son honors the Father. Or we ought to honor the Son as the Son honored the Father. And as the Father received honor, Anciently, now the Son is the one to receive the same honor according to the true pattern. And to not to do so is to dishonor God. Verse 30 of the same chapter, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. As he hears what his father speaks to him, the, the prophetic word of God to the son, he judges, he acts and judges according to the word. The pattern fulfills exactly as God said when it comes to Christ. He chooses to follow the pattern exactly, to himself be a perfect pattern for us. John 6, 31, our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Over and over and over again, this word is used as it is written, as it was in the law of Moses, and so forth. As the prophet Isaiah said, we've seen, as it is written, the prophetic word will always exactly fulfill according to the pattern of the exact word spoken. John 6, 57, as the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. So as Christ lives by the Father, so we need to live by Christ. Pattern to follow and repeat. Verse 58, same right after, next verse. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So here is a comparison in contrast that the manna rained down for them, but they ate it and died. But here we have the bread that came down from heaven, the true bread, Christ. And when we eat of his flesh, Spiritually, we shall live. So it's still a pattern repeating, but there's a, a comparison in contrast.
John 7, 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. As the scripture has said, the pattern follows the prophetic word of God exactly. John 8, 28, then said Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then ye shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Christ always followed the exact pattern of what God instructed him to do, showing us that we ought to do the same, that God's word fulfills just as he says. John 10, 15, as the Father knoweth me, even so I know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. This comparative pattern that as one knows the other, so the Son knows the Father. It's the same. John 10, 26, but ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. It's things are coming to pass just as God, Christ, had said. His prophetic word fulfills according to exactly what he says, being a pattern. John 12, 14, and Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written. The prophetic word repeating in antitype exactly as prophesied. John 12, 50, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Speaking God's prophetic word, speaking to his son, the son speaks the same word to us. It's a repetition. And it's connected to what God says, God's word. John 13, 15, for I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. I believe this is speaking about the foot washing that they did. So here again, God gives us patterns that we are to follow. As he did, we are to do. John 13, 33, little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come, so now I say unto you. What he said before, it applies exactly again, just as he said it before. Verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. He gives us a pattern as he loved us. That's a pattern that we need to follow in loving one another. The pattern repeats in this word. Kathos is the comparative word in the Greek that gives us this idea. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid. So here is a comparison in contrast. God doesn't give the way the world gives. The way the world gives is a pattern, and it's not a pattern that Christ follows. He gives an entirely different way that establishes a correct pattern on how to give, to give everything of self the way Christ did, unlike the world. Verse 31 but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. What the Father said, Christ did exactly as the Father said to do. He followed the instructions precisely. He followed the pattern exactly, giving us a pattern that we ought to do as well. And that's that the world may know the Father's love and Christ's love for the Father. John 15, 4, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Uh, 
the pattern is how a branch cannot live when it's broken off from the vine, it can't bear fruit. So we can't bear fruit when we're separated from Christ the vine. It's a comparative pattern. It's not exact, it's similar, but the, the principle is exact. The pattern of the principle is exactly repeated. Verse 9, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. There is a pattern that the Son followed, and we are to follow the same pattern. Verse 10, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Again, Christ establishes himself as the pattern, how he kept the commandments and abode in the Father's love, and that we are to keep his commandments and abide in his love. Verse 12, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Again, this same similar idea that we saw earlier. The perfect unselfish love of Christ as a pattern that we need to follow and repeat. John 17, 2, as, I, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So, as the Father has given power to the Son, the Son can give eternal life to all. Pattern repeats. John 17, 11, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I am come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. The oneness of the Father in the Son is a pattern that we need to follow and that will fulfill because it's a prophetic word that's spoken that shall repeat exactly. Uh, verse 14, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We are to be just as Christ is, according to the pattern he established for us. Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Again, same principle. John 17, 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I I also sent them into the world. Over and over and over again is this word used throughout the scriptures. I mean, we've just been going through the Gospels alone so far, seeing how many times Christ used this word to, to establish what either he himself did or what was said in his word, in, in the written word or in his his, his, his live word to them when he was here on earth and establishing patterns and also what he did and what happened in the past and what was said prophetically, all of it are patterns that repeat exactly as established. Verse 21, they, they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Same principle yet again. Verse 22, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. He, Christ used this word kathos uh, an exceeding number of times here, we see, to establish these principles for us. Verse 23, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me as thou hast loved me. Love them as thou hast loved me. Patterns repeating. The Father and the Son being patterns for us. John 19, 40, then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury, following a pattern of how or custom of how they prepared bodies for the burial 
it happened exactly the same for Jesus. John 20, 21, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Christ himself, the pattern, and how the Father sent him, and he sends us the same, according to the same pattern. Acts 2, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the, 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 the word of God, as revealed through the Spirit, they spoke it in the various tongues exactly as it was given unto them. They followed the pattern. Verse 22 of the same chapter, Ye men of Israel, heed these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. We can have knowledge according to the patterns. Acts 17, 7, 17, but when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. So the prophetic word in the past, the promise, and the time came for the promise to fulfill, and all happened just as God had said, according to the pattern of his word. Verse 42 of Acts 7, this is Stephen's uh, uh, final sermon when he was about to be stoned. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, ye have offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices for the space of 40 years in the wilderness. Have ye? So, as it is written, what is spoken prophetically or written prophetically in God's word will fulfill exactly according to what was said, according to the pattern of what God said. Verse 44, our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. The word fashion there again is tupos. And as it was appointed by Moses, they followed the pattern in building the tabernacle of witness. Type and anti-type. Again, directly connecting the word kathos here with the word tupos type verse 48 howbeit the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands as saith the prophet again according to god's prophetic word establishing a pattern uh, prophetic fulfillment acts 10 47 can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the holy ghost as well as we what happened to the Jewish believers happened exactly the same way, according to that pattern, to the Gentile believers. And that they also ought to follow the pattern of being baptized, which we've seen baptism itself is directly connected to two type and any type, two posts and anti two posts. Acts 11 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. This according to his ability. So the ability established the pattern that was followed by every man. The ability given by God. Acts 15, 8, and let the hearts bear the witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit, speaking about how the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles, just exactly according to the same pattern as it fell on the Jewish believers, disciples and apostles. Acts 15, 14, Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Speaking about pointing back to the experience that Peter had dealing with Cornelius that we've already seen earlier, and how it's especially pointing to this first instance as this idea of type is an original pattern and an anti-type is a follow-on pattern. The very first time the Holy Spirit poured out to the Gentiles was a pattern that would repeat. And itself was repeating the pattern of how it first fell on 
the disciples and apostles. Verse 15, and, this, and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written, tying it all back into this idea of God's prophetic word repeating in its fulfillment. Acts 22, 3, I am a man, verily a man, which I'm a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city of Cilicia, yet brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. So, Paul pointing to the zealousness of the Jews and wanting to follow the perfect manner of the law of Moses, even though they had developed all these uh, 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 unrighteous rules about how to do that, and their, but their zealousness to do it according to that wrong manner <laughs> is how Paul used to be, just like them, according to the pattern. Romans 1.13, Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. So what had happened previously with other Gentiles is happening also here in this instance, a pattern that repeats. Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Again, God's prophetic word is a pattern that repeats. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So here is a negative pattern that we are warned not to repeat. Romans 2, 24, For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Over and over again, as it is written is the pattern. That will always perfectly repeat as God says. Romans 3, 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. As it is written, that is the pattern that repeats. Whatever God says, see how liberally they apply this? To, they're just constantly going back to Moses, to Isaiah, to all of the different prophets. Whatever the prophet said, it's a pattern that is to repeat, because God's prophetic word always fulfills exactly the way he says. Being very broadly interpreted by the scriptures themselves, this principle of type and anti-type, or patterns that repeat. Romans 3, 8, and not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. Again, a negative pattern to avoid. Verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Pattern that has repeated for all, according exactly as God said beforehand, prophetically. Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. This Again, this idea of, as it is written, and it's also being connected with the idea of God said it before, as it, though it were so, even though it wasn't yet so. That God speaks of future things in the past tense because he knows for certain the pattern is going to repeat exactly as he has foretold because he sees the end from the beginning. Romans 8, 36, again, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Romans 9, 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Over and over and over again, as it is written, being a pattern that repeats. Romans 9, 29, and as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we have been as Sodom 
and have been made like unto Gomorrah. As it is written according to the prophets. There's a pattern for us to recognize because it's going to fulfill and repeat exactly as God said. Verse 33, as it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling block and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Romans 10, 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. As it is written, over and over and over again, Romans 8, 11, 8, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. A negative pattern to avoid that will repeat by those who don't recognize the pattern and avoid it. Romans eleven twenty six, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Speaking about a prophetic pattern that repeated in Christ, type and anti-type. Exactly as God said prophetically in advance. Romans 15, 3. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. As it is written. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Well, Christ is the pattern. As he received us to God's glory, we are to receive one another. Following the pattern, the great pattern man, Christ. Romans 15, 9. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing on to thy name. Verse 21, but as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. As it is written is a pattern, a prophetic, a prophetic pattern that repeats. And fulfills exactly as God says. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.6, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. The testimony of Christ or the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And even as the spirit of prophecy says, it shall be confirmed in you. The pattern will repeat according to God's prophetic word. Verse 31, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Giving us a pattern to choose to follow the good pattern to give all the glory to God and to glory in him. According to the prophetic pattern as it is written. First Corinthians 2, 9, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love them, love him. As it is written is the pattern. Whatever is written in the scriptures is a pattern that shall fulfill and repeat exactly as God said. First Corinthians 4.17, for this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Paul taught according to the same pattern in every church in Christ. And they were to bring to remembrance that we might follow the teaching. Purge out therefore, 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Here we have feasts fulfilling in type and anti-type. The Passover, the type, Christ and his sacrifice, the anti-type. The unleavened bread, the feast of unleavened bread, the type, and being us being a new lump, being totally transformed 
being the antitype in fulfillment of the pattern. And the word as here, kathos, is the comparative word that gives us this idea of the feast repeating in type and antitype. First Corinthians 8, 2, if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. So negative and positive patterns according to how we're thinking. That repeat. We've already looked at the first Corinthians 10 example. Uh, verse 33 in that same passage, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. So Paul would follow a pattern of seeking to please all men in all things, but not for his own profit, but that others might be saved. Applying this principle to his own ministry. 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Showing how other faithful believers can establish a pattern for us that we are to follow as they are following Christ. According to the pattern. Verse 2, now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. What was said before is a pattern that we are to follow and repeat. First Corinthians 12, 11, but all these worketh the, the one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Here the, the will of God through the Holy Spirit is the pattern on how he accomplishes his purposes. Verse 18, but now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. God's will and good pleasure is the pattern that shall fulfill and repeat, just as he said. First Corinthians 13, 12, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. So how Christ knows us in the final transformation, we shall know him. Pattern repeating. 1 Corinthians 14, 34, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. What was written in the law of Moses is a pattern that is to be followed. 1 Corinthians 15, 38, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed to his own body. So showing patterns in nature that can repeat in a spiritual sense. Verse 49, and as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. This idea that things in this world of sin on this earth still have aspects of the image impressed upon it the impression we saw this idea of typology being an impression through god's creative power and that image that we bear is a pattern that we will actually bear the true image of the heavenly in the future type and anti-type 2 Corinthians 1.5, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. When we, again, when we choose to follow Christ and we experience his sufferings, we will also receive the abundance of the Spirit to new life as he did. Second Corinthians, uh, verse 14, as also ye have acknowledged in us in part, that we are your rejoicing, even as ye are also ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. So how we acknowledge the truth as we've been taught, and that brings rejoicing, is a pattern that will be repeated 
when the ones that we've shared with are there with us in eternity and the rejoicing that that will bring. Second Corinthians 4, 1 Corinthians 4.1, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. So the mercy that God shows us gives us strength to go forth and do ministry for others that they might receive the same mercy according to the pattern. Second Corinthians 6, 16, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. As God hath said, according to God's prophetic word, it shall be so. The fulfillment will exactly follow the written pattern. Second uh, Corinthians 8, 5. And for this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Again, a pattern repeating. Verse 6, insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. That the ministry and blessing that we've received from others ministering to us that we would show the same pattern in ministering to others. Verse 15, as it is written, he that have gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. Speaking about when they were gathering the manna and how everybody was provided for, and no matter how much they gathered, and speaking of using that same principle as a pattern on when they were gathering offerings and that the, the wealthier would help the poor so that all would be provided for through God's manifold providence for us, according to the pattern. Second Corinthians 9, 3, Yet have I sent brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. So what Paul the prophet said that they were to do and follow the pattern. Verse 7, every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of a necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So every man according as he purposes in his heart. What we purpose in our heart, it will come to pass according to that very purpose or pattern that we've accepted. When we accept God's true pattern from the scriptures, it will come to pass just so when we give the glory to God and trust him. Verse 9, as it is written, he hath dispersed abroad and hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. As it is written is the pattern. Second uh, Corinthians 10, 7, do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. So as others have given themselves to Christ, we are to do the same patterns repeating. Second Corinthians 11, 12, what I, but what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. True, faithful one serving as a pattern that will repeat. Galatians 2 7, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So, sharing the gospel with the Jews was given to Peter, and that is in the same way sharing the gospel with the Gentiles was given to Paul. Similar patterns. Galatians 3, 6, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So at Abraham, the great father of faith, and how he trusted and believed God, even when he gave impossible promises, that is a pattern for us. And as righteousness was accounted to him when he believed, righteousness will be counted to us when we also believe God's impossible promises, especially the promise that he can transform us and make us like him, righteous 
like him, righteous by faith. Galatians 5, 21, envying, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Here's negative patterns that we need to recognize and not repeat. We also have a similar word, such like, that we'll have to look at in a future study. Ephesians 1.4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Being holy and without blame before him in love is a pattern that has been since the foundation of the world. And we need, as he's chosen us, we need to choose him that we might follow the pattern. Ephesians 3.3, 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before uh, in few words. What the prophet wrote before Paul is now being repeated, but in greater explanation, a, a antitypical fulfillment, as it were, with additional details. Ephesians 4.4, 4, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope, of your calling. We have one great pattern, the one hope of our calling, Jesus Christ. Verse 17, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Here a negative pattern to recognize and not repeat. Verse 21, if so be that ye have heard of him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus positive pattern to recognize and to follow and choose to follow and repeat. Verse 32, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. As Christ has forgiven us through his great grace and mercy and love is a pattern that we are to recognize and follow by being kind to one another and tenderhearted and forgiving one another. Ephesians 5, 2, as walk in love, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. So here we're showed a pattern on what it means to walk in love. And it's to love as Christ loved by making a sacrifice to God and giving us, giving ourselves to God and to others as Christ gave himself for us. Verse 3, but fornication and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. So saints don't follow the negative patterns. They recognize the negative patterns and they choose not to follow them. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So Christ's love for the church is a pattern on, for husbands on how to love their wives through self-sacrifice. Verse 29, for no man yet ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord, the church. Again, the same pattern we are to follow in Christ's love for the church and on how we love our spouses specifically how the husband loves the wife philippians 1 7 even as it is meet for me to think this of you all because i have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel ye are all partakers of my grace so the good pattern of having the brethren in our hearts and following the, pretend, the pattern of partaking of the grace of Christ as manifest in Paul. First, uh, Philippians 2.12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. A pattern of obedience to be repeated. We've already looked at Philippians 3.17. Colossians 1 6, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit 
as it doth also in you, since the day ye have heard it, and knew of the grace of God in truth. How the gospel would be preached in all the world, and the pattern of how it brings forth fruit is a pattern for us to follow. Verse 7, as ye also learned of Ephrathas, 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 our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. A pattern of how to be a faithful minister, which we should choose to follow. Colossians 2, 7, rooted and built it up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving, following the true teaching as a pattern to repeat. Colossians 3.13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Christ's unimaginable great grace and forgiveness for us is a pattern on how we treat others. 1 Thessalonians 1.5, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. So how Paul and his fellow ministers with him behaved themselves among the Thessalonians was a pattern that he's bidding them to follow through the power of the Holy Ghost. First Thessalonians 2, 2. But even after that, we had suffered before and we were shamefully entreated as ye know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. So the shameful treatment that Paul received for preaching the true gospel in Philippi is a pattern that will repeat uh, in the suffering of those today who also go forth as faithful ministers. Verse 4, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. A faithful pattern on how to preach the gospel that we should choose to follow. Verse 5, neither at any time use we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetous, covetousness. God is witness. Both showing the true pattern in comparison with a false pattern of using covetousness and flattering words. Verse 13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. How we receive these pat prophetic patterns from God's word in truth is a pattern on how it will manifest in our lives. All right, we're almost done here. Um, verse 14, for ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. So the treatment that we receive from unbelievers even in the church is a pattern that will repeat uh first thessalonians 3 4 but verily when we were with you we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass and ye know so as he told them and as they suffered tribulation and they were warned it shall come to pass, even as it was said. It did then, and it shall yet again, according to the pattern. First Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 4.1 Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. A positive pattern of receiving the truth and how to walk in our lives and please God and a pattern to choose to follow. In verse 6, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, we also have forewarned you and testify. 
And for time's sake, I won't go through it, but there's a whole another 20 or 30 more. Um, well, some really beautiful ones in Hebrews and in Peter and in the John's epistles that I encourage all uh, pointing to the judgment and to the sanctuary and to the love of God and over and over and over and over again this principle is so widespread in God's word and just in these two words would have this meaning of just as and even as so here let's uh close with prayer and as you are able please join me if you can in kneeling as we prayers to the lord gracious heavenly father the most holy creator god uh, we marvel at how amazing your word truly is how deep and rich is the meaning that you have given us in establishing the prophetic patterns and how solid we are in taking these principles and applying them to our own lives and to our own times. And as we will continue to see, you intended them all, especially for us in these last days. Help us to take these things to heart, O oh Lord, to recognize the patterns and to choose to follow the correct patterns, O oh Lord, and to choose not to follow the wrong patterns and to trust your righteousness by faith, O Lord, that you will accomplish these things in us as you did it for your people of old, exactly as you said. And to the extent that we don't choose to do so, Lord, and that we harden our hearts as they did of old, the same patterns will fall upon us if we turn from your truth to follow our own ways. Save us from ourself, Lord. Thank you so much for loving us. Help us to trust and believe your word and to take these principles to heart that you might account it unto us for righteousness as well as our prayer. May I be in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.